Hey, so first ever update video here on location at the train station where I'm stranded for a little bit. So excuse the audio quality, I'll probably just go ahead and throw up some gameplay footage instead. Hey guys, so basically my lift arrived by the time I filmed all those really fancy looking train station shots with my phone. So I thought I'd leave that intro in as the absolute shortest on location update ever done. But I did decide to leave the idea of just throwing up some gameplay footage of just what I've been playing recently. Because I've got a lot of gameplay footage and it might be a little bit more interesting. In the description for these um, updates videos, which I might just call catch up videos instead potentially but in the description I'm gonna have a link to a newsletter that I put out I do an email newsletter every couple of months I recently put one out a couple of weeks ago now which just has like the last six months of leftover culture review all sort of condensed down into a newsletter so if you do want to follow me via email newsletter that's totally an option you can subscribe through viewing the newsletter um, in my opinion I work with email a lot in my professional job so it, it does make sense to me having that um having the ability to email someone is a lot more personal and direct than say my video showing up in your subscription boxes and the thing with social media is that the algorithms are always changing Facebook might well I know Facebook doesn't particularly find my content very interesting so I, I don't ever get many views through Facebook and it's getting harder and harder for like my leftover culture review page to get that same sort of exposure since they really try and push for the paid content on Facebook itself. And even on YouTube, um, it is quite easy to fall out of people's, you know, my subscription feeds just because, you know, you didn't watch a video or two and you've been watching other videos. So face, uh, YouTube will start, you know, changing what videos get shown to you more frequently. So, so email is something that I, I, I I think it's a really cool idea for people who want to follow the show more, but for these sort of um, catch up videos, it's going to be a great way for me to put out an email, but also have that email available in the description for anyone who's curious. So that's the main show. That's where I'm going to have the recent videos and stuff if, if you do want to catch up. But off the main Leftover Culture Review channel. I've actually got great pleasure of um, welcoming Nostalgic Road to the Leftover Culture Review. At the end of my last updates video, I put out a um, just a request for any people who want to con contribute contribute to the website. Um, Nostalgic Row hit me up. He's actually he does a few video game reviews himself, but he also does a lot of like cartoons and movies and. Yeah, cartoons and movies. So he's um, submitted two um, videos or two articles to the Leftover Culture Review, three videos. He's just recently covered the Sonic cartoon franchise from the 90s. I do like the way he treats the material in his videos. I feel like I'm in good hands when I'm watching a Nostalgic Row video. He uh, knows the material well. He does, he does put a lot of research and time into watching the episodes and he has a really good understanding of the cartoons by the time he makes his videos. So that really shows through for me and I was really excited about adding someone who who does watch more movies and cartoons to the channel because it's a really good fit. So um, thanks for coming aboard Nostalgic Row and um, check out the Leftover Culture Review website for his videos. And talking about videos, I was recently on a podcast, the Game Deficiency number 25 or 26. So Game Deficiency are a bunch of Australian YouTubers. Always pretty bizarre videos coming out from them. I always find them very entertaining. So, you know, very happy to be a part of the podcast. They recently put out a, um, I thought it was a very funny game chasing slash pickups type video, The Bargain Squad. So if you're after something a bit silly that's not necessarily just video games, then definitely check out that episode and check out the podcast if you want to hear me umming and ahhing my way through a bunch of questions. I was also joined on the podcast by two more Australian YouTubers, Rusty Wood, who's got his own channel, and Ryan Smith, R2 My D2, who's recently just started up his channel again. So um, 
good little circle of Aussie YouTubers right there. And talking about collaborations, I also did the voiceover for a Paradise and Fairies video. Say hello to the SNES. It's not a system I talk about much on the Leftover Culture Review. Um, I've done one SNES game, Alien vs Predator, a very long time ago. Not one of my best reviews, but I, I did enjoy being able to do the voiceover for that review and also toned down a few of those Master System jabs that was in the original script. A lot of respect for the Master System, so um... And look, while I'm plugging videos, my Leftovers channel recently just put out my review on a Polaroid camera, the Polaroid 300. And um, yeah, really enjoyed doing a hardware review. I guess I like the review format in general. I really enjoy breaking things down and trying to talk about why I enjoy them. And cameras are no different. I'm still passionate about lots of things outside video games like action figures, which again, the Leftovers channel, um, I'm boosting up I've actually got a couple of action figure reviews out recently and there's definitely more to come in the way of action figure reviews. So if that's your thing, you know, please go check out the Leftovers channel, but if not, totally understand. All right, let's do a room tour. As you can see, I've got a, a, a three meter by three meter size room. It's um, not a big space for me to work in. Like I said, I, I've got my computer set up there that I do all my special effects and a lot of my editing on. I, I do use my laptop for a lot of editing just because it's, um, it's mostly portable. So yeah, computer for my special effects. The Leftover Culture show is actually one that I've been working on a lot lately putting together the final effects for that, which I'm really excited about. And then it's just a case of piecing it all back together. This is pretty much what's left of my games collection after selling off, you know, I I've sold off a fair chunk of stuff just to pay bills and whatnot, but um, it's kind of cool having um, this kind of setup for the games collection. I don't need shelves and shelves of games. I like having a few of my favourites, you know, just available right here on the rack, uh, ready to pick up and play. People, it's easy for people to flick through. You know, these are the games that that I really enjoy playing. I haven't sold anything that I feel like I'm going to miss. I've sold off a lot of my, uh, you know, now that we're talking about it. I have sold off a lot of my 64 collection, so I'm down to, to 8 games on the 64, which is a bit pitiful. So yeah, these, these are a lot of the games that I'm playing, you know, my favourite games I guess. You know, I've got more, I've got a few Sega games up here. A few of the more sort of expensive ones that I would be more likely to pull out. And of course my Jaguar collection there. Again, sold off one or two Jaguar games because they're actually worth a lot of money. That's probably, to be honest, the Jaguar is probably my most expensive collection and one that I've um, held on to pretty tightly. I haven't sold much from that at all. It's a system that I really I don't know what it is about the Jaguar. I really enjoy the Jaguar. It is, I guess, a lot like the Saturn. The emulation is not quite there. It's not great. Um, it's choppy. It doesn't always run well. The graphics are usually messed up. So having a Jaguar system is probably going to be your best bet for playing Atari Jaguar games. And the system is incredibly 90s. And it's a real interesting mix of graphics. And I've got a real soft spot for it. But um, as you can probably tell, looking up at this side of my shelves and stuff, plenty of action figures. Some old pirate Lego. This was actually mine as a kid. Rebuilt it, you know, Mighty Max figures, War Planet. This one was a birthday present this year. Really, really like The Simpsons, obviously. I really like Lego, I really like The Simpsons. So this is my old TV setup. Usually in the reviews they're just playing static, but this TV here is actually set up with um, the Master System 
and normally I'll run a few cables if I want to play like a light gun game I'll use this TV here this one here is a bit harder to set up because it doesn't have any AV inputs so everything is RF through the VCR so you can have AV inputs into the VCR but when I set up this games room in October is when I moved I didn't really I didn't really set up the TV so that just plays static essentially at the moment but the Jaguar used to be hooked up to this TV and it I really did enjoy playing my Jag on on an old screen TV like that but in terms of systems you know I've got the Saturn, the Dreamcast, the Jaguar, the 64, the Mega Drive as well as the Super Nintendo in my cupboard in just one of those IKEA Expedites. I've moved a few boxes into the shelves here as well, but um you know it, it's a good way to just shut the door and not have to worry about dust or lots of cables hanging around the place. As you can see like the top of my cupboard is just literally a, a dumping ground at the moment. I said my room was clean. I didn't say it was immaculate. I've still I wish I had a bit more space for shelves and stuff but you know, it, it, it's it's a rental property, so you kind of just got to work with the space you have, and it's just a mountain of stuff. That's fine. Shut the door and have a look at it. Uh, going back to yeah, a lot of Lego at the moment. I built my own little Lego haunted house to take up a bit of shelf space. More action figures. Lots of action figures. Um, House of the Dead action figures, I thought they were kind of cool. Um, movie Ninja Turtle Lego, this was actually a birthday present from my parents, so um, I guess I guess they know me pretty well. And uh, yeah, some old Transformers from when I was in high school, <laughs> university. Um, big Transformers fan for a while there still really enjoy these two figures in particular. I've also got my Starscream. He's my favourite character from the show. Uh, picked up when I had a bit more disposable income. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, slightly newer addition is my Goosebumps board game. Really love that board game. So, looking into the other... actually, down here we've got my box of controllers. I saw this on... Oh, this is setting a bad example already, but most of the controllers in here are a bag. And I saw the, um... Who was it? Was it... It wasn't the happy console gamer. The happy video game nerd. I think his name's Derek, the happy video game nerd, had a setup like that. And um Yeah, great idea. Bag your controllers, put them in a box. Works well. Other side of the cupboard. Look, more Ninja Turtle Lego. Yeah, this is a little bit less organized in here at the moment. Um, plenty of Ninja Turtle Lego. I really like the line at the, um, in terms of Lego, I haven't been that excited about Lego for a long time, but seeing the Ninja Turtle stuff really brought back a lot of memories, both for the franchise and from, you know, Lego in general. So, so kudos Lego. You really struck a nerve with me there. Uh, the Toxic Crusaders, I mentioned them already that, you know, that when I reviewed this line of toys, just as an article, still getting a lot of hits on the website, so apparently it's pretty popular. Most of that was imported from the US, um, a little bit of it from Europe, but uh, definitely wasn't a cheap one to pick up. And then I've also got my pretty small Earthworm Jim collection there. All Playmates, so Playmates, Playmates, 